It says racism has cost the country $16 trillion, specifically keeping us out of certain things and not being able to make certain amount of money and work certain jobs. That alone has cost the country $16 trillion. Why? No, I, I'm not up on this. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pull the article crazy. up. That's so basically, crazy. it's like they keep us out of certain sectors. You can only reach so high, whatever the case. If they were to allow us the same opportunities, when I say they, I mean the ones who own the businesses, who run the banks or whatever the case, the way that black people spend money, they estimated it would be about $16 trillion funneling into the economy. <laughs> That's crazy. So racism is literally hurting. putting us in debt. It's hurting society. Not only is it hurting us, they're taking our money and giving it to foreigners on top of that. So how y'all feel about that? The fact that racism is literally putting us in debt. This is why, like, you know, you you if you've been to Atlanta, you know, I live there. You things get in a totally different perspective being in Atlanta than anywhere else because you see what it looked like when we're doing everything, when we're thriving. You know, you can go to out here a nice gated community and be like, wow, look at this, and everybody is, you know, yeah, white. Color or no, but in Atlanta, there's a million of them, and every single person, every homeowner in that entire community is black. So, you know, it's, it's a whole different, like, Everybody, I be bringing everybody out there. You know, we, 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 I'm, I'm, I tell everybody, like, come, I'm telling you, come see me. Come see me in Atlanta. Um, niggas mind be blown. Like, they're like, like that. everybody, everywhere I went, every, every, every single part, every police, every banker, every, everything. So do you feel you like Atlanta's the black Mecca? Like for for the sure. No, Atlanta, sure. Atlanta, like the black Hollywood, bro. I felt for like, sure. I felt like I was in Africa when I got off the plane in Atlanta. Straight up. I went to Target. Everybody was black. <laughs> Nigga, I went to the food. I'm like, damn, Target? Everybody black? Because you come out here, you might see one or two cashiers. Nigga, uh -huh. everybody was everybody. black. So you think I'm we like, can colonize damn. Atlanta? Us as black? We already did. Already like, did. like I'm going to tell you something. In, in Stone Mountain, that like used to be the home of the KKK. They got all the, the Confederate generals um, carved into the side of the mountain. That city's like 70% black now. All big homes, almost all black. Like... We've successfully colonized within the 285 it, 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 for the, sure. The, the monument is still there. It's Ain't still it? there for sure. No, hold on, hold on. Let me read. Let me read this article <laughs> just to give a background <laughs> yeah. on what he's talking about. It's still there. all over the place. I know, no, 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 I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay, so here, 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 a bank has a major bank has put a price tag on how much the economy has lost as a result of discrimination against African Americans. Now, to America, who says discrimination doesn't exist, we're making all this up. Blah blah blah. No reparations, all that shit. Here they have put an actual price tag on it. $16 trillion since 2000, U.S. gross domestic product lost that much as a result of discriminatory practices in a range of areas. So all around the economy, they discriminate. It's an invisible glass ceiling that we're not allowed to pass, which is costing the economy money including in education and access to business loans. According to a new study by Citigroup, it's not an insignificant number. By comparison, U.S. GDP totaled $19.5 trillion last year. And not acting to reverse discriminatory practices will continue to exact a cost. Citigroup estimates the economy will see a $5 trillion boost over the next five years if U.S. were to tackle key areas of discrimination against African Americans. So this wow. ain't about nobody else in America. This is strictly the discriminatory practices practice on our people and our culture. So when we get to talking about reparations and this and that and people's, I don't believe we're ever going to get it unless we fight for it. But this is reparations right here. We're looking at it. Six, I mean, 16 trillion from racism. Imagine how much money will be circulating the same way it circulates in Atlanta nationwide if they was to take off that glass ceiling. And, and then what's crazy, too, even about Atlanta, though, um, is somebody I know out there who does a lot of public speaking, and he was explaining that that the average black business in Atlanta still, the average white business still earns 10 times more than the average black business in Atlanta. Wow. So when you go to Atlanta and you see how much we're thriving, we're still being held down there. And you can see what we can do. So that sixteen trillion is crazy, but like Jesus they know about our spending habits. Yeah. We're, if you give us the money, like if you remember the Dave Chappelle reparation skit, he Man. said he, they said the recession is over. <laughs> <laughs> we back, baby. 
<laughs> one day, yeah. give us the money. One oh. day, we will stimulate and invigorate this and entire terrible, economy. Bro. I'm and that's, rich, and that's bitch. so bad because <laughs> like we go spend it with everybody else. Yeah, we gonna be close to whiteness, right? They did a they did a breakdown. Thirteen trillion lost in potential business revenue. Because of discriminatory lending to African American entrepreneurs. So these are the black people you see online say, hey man, I try to go get a business loan. I got A1 credit, this, that, and the third. Denied. 13 trillion lost. So we're not making this shit up with an estimated 6.1 million jobs not generated as a result. So when we say employ black people, support black businesses, they're literally putting a stop to it. This ain't made up shit. This is why I'm pulling this up. 2.7 trillion in income lost because of disparities in wages suffered by African Americans. 218 billion lost over the past two decades because of discrimi discrimination in providing housing credit. How many videos we done seen? Black person try to go sell a home. They get under undercut with, with the price, the estimate. And they have a white that. person go back with the same home, put up pictures of a white family, and the price skyrocket. We're not making this shit up. It's right here in black and fucking white. 90 billion to 113 billion in lifetime income lost from discrimination in accessing higher education. We're literally being boxed out from every corner. <laughs> this is why we need movements like y'all to change the mindsets of the people to get out here and stand on business and we can reverse this. But crying and protesting, holding signs, hey, we need... That's not going to get it, bro. Yeah. I'm just sorry. It yeah. ain't going to get it. We we got to put boots on the ground, and you got to be willing to really take some action. Look how much money our community has lost due to these invisible discrimination. And all they're going to do is say, hey, it don't exist. Y'all making this shit up. Yeah, that's, that, that's the old... That was 100 years ago, you know? But <laughs> that... 16 trillion, man, is that that's staggering. That's insanity. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. how much is the national debt? What is it? it, 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 it <laughs> we could have fixed that. We damn near got a quarter of it here <laughs> yeah, that they yeah. take it from us. So, black people, y'all got to wake up, man. We got to start standing on business. I'm tired of the talking. I don't want to hear about, I don't even want to hear about voting because they make the laws. They control the laws. They write the laws. Like um, one of the Rockefellers said, let me control the money and I don't give a fuck who, who writes in the laws. Yeah. I control the money. You can write whatever law you want. I control the money. I control you. I yeah, and, and people, our people don't even understand about lobbying and, and lobbyists. Like, that's who really gets stuff done, and that costs a lot of money. Like you were saying, protesting doesn't get laws changed. Lobbying does. Lining pockets, greasing palms. That's what gets laws changed. How do you think the Asians got their bill passed so quick? Hate crime. Yep. It's called money. They got money. You want to know how they got money? <laughs> Go in your own community. You'll see how they, your money is in their pocket. That's like, that's doing. the thing about Atlanta, too. The majority of the place, so th this is a cold part. The majority of where we eat at in Atlanta, the Asians still own. Um, the majority, the majority of the clubs that people go to, the Asians don't own, but it's you know Africans from the continent, Arabs, white people. That's who owns all that. And there's a, even with Africans from the continent, it's a clear, distinct difference in dealing. I know somebody, a brother from Detroit, who moved down and opened up a spot, and literally like some Africans pressed him like, "Who told you you can do that?" Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, who told you you can, like, he's like, wait a minute, I thought we, hey, I thought we, we supposed to be yeah, brothers. brothers. Hey. Like, we all from the diaspora. Like, nah, nah, they not looking at it like that. I remember we was doing, we was uh, teaching at Juneteenth in Atlanta, and this African dude walked by, and bro was like, black power, right? He looked and was like, nah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, yeah. but they're coming in, they know that we're going to spend the money, though. So they're opening establishments that are just, pots for us to throw money in you see what i'm saying because everything is a club in atlanta you know the the oxygen is hookah in atlanta you know what i'm saying the so oxygen hookah the, is the crazy. oxygen is hookah you know what i mean you just breathe it in as soon as you go outside you, feel the airport, huh? you know like as soon as you get the airport you just just hookah you Man. know what i'm saying hey, so, that's on God. it's crazy you know? because one, one of them um I always bring that up too. That video that I watched, the how to sell to a Negro. It's like yeah. they, they yeah. programmed us to even to be spending like that and create that 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 conscious state of mind to where we want to prove how much money we got to somebody, even though we ain't even got no damn money. Mm -hmm. That was my next thing with this though, yeah. is that once they, you know, they put this out here and then they said, Okay, we're gonna give those six million jobs, then what's what do you think the next thing is gonna be? You know, now that they're not discriminating that way, there's gonna be a way that the government finds to okay, we took color out of it. 
now that's when you go to classism or you know whatever yeah. the case may be to be the next thing that they try to use. Mm-hmm. So people do, black people do need to be wary of that because what you're talking about, you know, how to sell to a Negro when we got that money. We didn't understand what was on the other end of it. You get yeah. what I'm saying? We didn't really understand what we signed or what part or what plan we were a part of. So we do need to arm ourselves mentally and understand that when they give us something, more than likely they're trying to take something away right. down the line. So yeah. let's when we have it, let's you know what I mean. Cultivate the minds and figure exactly. out how to. When we do step out there and start using it, let's use it the right way. Y'all yeah. seen that study they did where they said uh, when they're talking about like by 2050 how the the face of the average American is going to change. Yeah. And you know black and brown is going it, it's going to dominate. Mm-hmm. But the wealth they said we're going to have even less wealth when that by the time that happens. We're going to control even less wealth than we do now. So even with the the population growing, we still are going to have less money. You know, and I know that's kind of, it, it's almost hard to to really conceptualize because we, we feel like, or at least I feel like, you know, we're getting on a little bit more right now. But what wealth is too, that's, that's, a, that's a whole concept between having some money and what it is for us. I remember... You know when that term in the early 2000s, hood rich was out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. My pops had the little had 22s on the truck, nigga. We had it. We had the Standard game console. You like, feel yep. me? Like to us, we're we we're rich now. You know what I'm saying? Like nah. It's a <laughs> I remember quote. I I went to a a, a a a private school in fifth grade. Boom, pops put me in private school. Oh, okay, shit. boom. We in private school. Then I realized like we didn't have money. You see what I'm saying? Well, when kids yeah. are like, "How many houses do you guys own?" We're renting still. I'm like, "Uh, one." Yeah, well, I got two. We own two houses. I'm like, "Then we only rent." How long was in private one school? House. One year. Oh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> the tuition was kicking pops ass. Tell huh? me, no, no. What happened was we end up. Uh, uh, I end up moving to California. We ended up moving okay. to California for uh, over the summer that year. You see what I'm saying? So okay. we went into private school no more after that. But uh, uh yeah. So it just was. It, it put things in perspective, like how they was talking. These kids are like, I got a million, half a million dollar house. That's 20 years, 24 years ago. So imagine how much that house is worth today oh, if it yeah. were half a million in. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that's what wealth is. Oh, you know, and a lot of our people, um, you got a lot of people on the internet that are talking about, oh, you want to get generational wealth, do this. And people don't understand, you want to get some money today. That's generational wealth is not today. No. If you want generational wealth, you're not going to get it. <laughs> That's for your Past kids and for your grandkids. Yeah. grandkids it's not grandkids. for you. You know yep. what I'm saying? Also, think about the organizations that black people have made millions of dollars from, right? The NFL, the NBA, <laughs> the record industry, things like that. You ain't got all no mic game. Things, oh, my bad. <laughs> all, of these things, all of these things are things that are, are low-key, newly been around. Like, hip-hop has only celebrated, what, 50, 50 years? 50 years. So... In the organizations we're even in and making money in, there's not necessarily longevity in that as well. So we have to teach longevity. Like, that is something that you have to instill into us. Yeah. So I think it'll happen over time, though. Look, it's a quote. It says, you will own nothing and you will be happy. So the fact that you said it'll be more of us, but we'll have less wealth. I'm seeing certain things happen around the country that's making me believe that's true. I don't know if you're up on Louisiana. They granted permission for this wealthy community to break away and start their own town. So they separated from the actual community itself and created their own shit, Mm -hmm. like their own country damn near of just the wealthy and the poor is just left there to fend for themselves. So I I, I see that as something that most people will ignore, but as we ignore it, it might start to trend and it's like, Hey, the wealthy is literally building bunkers. We seeing that we like, damn, what the fuck they're doing there? We looking over here, they're separating from communities. And then you seeing stats like that, like, Hey, you guys are going to own nothing. You ain't going to own no houses because BlackRock and a couple other companies are buying up all the real estate. So you're never going to be able to buy a house. You know what I'm saying? You damn it. You don't own your car. Like you don't own anything. You don't. Realistically, you, you, know. you don't even own your own fucking kids. Then, yeah, yeah, you don't sign a birth certificate. You, you got a <laughs> social security them. number. <laughs> they own you. Mm-hmm. So I look at shit like that, and I go, "How can we reverse this? Do you guys go that deep, or you guys just surface level less?" No, nah, we 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 go that deep. What's crazy is all that's happening in Atlanta right now. It's something called the Buckset in Atlanta. So Buckhead, and what's crazy is we all we hang out in Buckhead. Our people have apartments in Buckhead, things like that. But when you hit them back, Buckhead back blocks and them big ass houses, them is all white folks back there. You see what I'm saying? But we do plenty kicking it and stuff. And, and the white people in in Buckhead are, are are sick of us. So they they they're they're lobbying for something called the Bucks it for Buckhead to exit 
at being a part of Atlanta, but but those taxes that are paid in, in Buckhead is what supports Atlanta. Between the taxes being paid in Buckhead and the revenue brought in for the airport, because you know the airport technically is not in the city of Atlanta, but the city of Atlanta controls the airport. So between that airport and Buckhead, that's what keeps Atlanta going as far as on a civic level. So the white folks up there, they're like, nah, we sick of this because we come, we we got a saying in Atlanta called Buckhead's a new bankhead. Right, because Buckhead is nice, but we kicking it, and there's shootouts, it's all kind of stuff. Some of the hottest, most uppity clubs, niggas is getting killed out front of. You see mm. what I'm saying? They're sick of it, and they want to be able to create their own police force so they can over-police the areas where we're in. Versus APD, they're stretched thin, so there's less police mm. in that area because technically it's a lower crime rate. You see what I'm saying? So that's something that they're doing there, and they want that wealthy, the wealthiest part of Atlanta to seed from the rest of Atlanta and become its own city. You see what I'm saying? So they're, they're definitely trying to do that now. How I'm starting to look at it, to back to what you're saying, by them separating, I think now they're getting to a point realizing how much money they're losing. They're not giving a fuck about black, white, red, or orange no more. They're looking at it like you got green or you broke. So now they're going to start to really push that form of... I wouldn't say not as racism, but yeah, we wealthy. They not, you know what Creative I mean? Yeah, exactly. Classism, yeah. Classism, yeah. Well, yeah, they, you, you the enemy if you ain't up here with us. If you got money, fuck it. You fucking with us. If not, we finna orchestrate this to separate us from everything else. And slowly they gonna start doing it. You gonna see it out here. They boosting the economy up. People starting to have to gravitate to certain spots where you only gonna see the rich over here and you go. Well, it's kind of like that over here in Beverly Hills. Yeah, ain't no free. They they tried to put a free ride through Beverly Hills. They hell no, they wasn't gonna allow that shit. Yeah, they wasn't gonna right. let that shit happen. So it's kind of like that out here with Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills, they have so many restrictions which you can't do because they own it. Everybody over there is putting in so much money. They got their own shit going on. That's that. This is own city. Yeah, they so cold. They can vote you about the neighborhood. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, that's real talk, bro. <laughs>